thought I'd share this with you. This is uh, a radio which I've just bought off eBay uh, blind. It wasn't shown as working and not claimed to be working. Um, it's a military airband uh, receiver. Uh, sorry, transceiver. It uh, transmits as well as receives. Uh, made by a company called Drum Grange Limited, uh, which is uh, still around. And it supplies equipment to the armed forces. Um, and it's always a bit of a risk when you buy something like this because, of course, it may very well not be working. And there is next to no information available, as you'd expect with a piece of military equipment like this, on the Internet or indeed, as far as I know, anywhere else. So it's a big, uh, a big gamble, really. Um, this particular piece of equipment according to the paperwork in the advert was taken out of use uh, from Donna Nook which is uh, well I'm sure you'll all know more than I do about what Donna Nook is but it's a, a military establishment in the northern part of Lincolnshire and it says it's unserviceable so it doesn't claim to be working although sometimes when they just pull stuff out they don't check it so it may or may not be working and it says that it was uh, removed from Donanook due to the, the decommissioning of Project Hercules and Project Marshall Aquila. Now, I found a little bit of information about those projects, but again, uh, only limited, as you, you might expect. So the question is, will it work? <laughs> and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. I've taken a gamble and uh, we'll see if it pays off. The What will determine whether this works or not is in large part whether this, when I turn it on, whether this tuned light comes on. Um, this will show that the circuit is locked on the on the frequency and I should be able to hear signals. Um, the controls are pretty self-explanatory. Um, so let's just turn it on and, and see what happens, shall we? So, very good sign. Tuned light is on. Let me just turn the volume down. We've got audio. Tuned light is on. So that's looking good. Now there are two options on the display and I happen to know from reading up what little information there is about other people that have bought these is that the option two reconfigure asks for an access code and this will probably be to program the channels because this is uh, channelized, there's an option to have it channelized. That access code is not available anywhere and I'm not even going to try and guess it because I wouldn't want to be locked out which is entirely possible with these things. Uh, it's going to be unobtainable because uh, it will be um, military information which won't be made available, I expect. So what we need to do is turn it off, turn it on again and choose the, the other option, which should give us the ability just to set the frequency manually. So I'm going to do that. There we go. And you can see that uh, it's looking good and it's sounding good. Uh, I should explain this is um, this covers this radio covers both the VHF uh, civil aviation band and the UHF military aviation band, so we should be able to hear both. Um, just to test out whether we've got anything at all, just get my bit of paper. Um, it's a good idea to select a, a channel that or frequency that we know will be in use, and um, most airfields or military airfields anyway have a. A weather service to tell pilots what the conditions are on the ground at uh, and in the air at the airstrip. So I happen to know the frequency for Cranwell. So locals will know that Cranwell is a local RAF flying school and uh, um, aerodrome. So let's program that in. I happen to know that it's on 126.325. And I guess that's the enter button. Let's turn her up. And there we have Bramble information. Gusting 21 knots, Good Hope Blue, QFE 1001, I don't want to speak too soon, but it rather looks like my gamble has paid off, doesn't it? So if we go over to channel, yeah, then the, these are the channels that have been preset. And I, I'll just turn that down. I presume these are the ones that were in use at Donanook which I've got, only got this lashed up at the minute with a temporary antenna, so we're unlikely to hear anything from Donna Nook. 
if these are the frequencies. I'll check that later on, but I wouldn't be surprised. So we're not going to get anything on the uh, channels, and we can't reprogram those without the access code, so that will be my guess anyway. By the way, we've got um, channel remote, keypad remote, and full remote. That will be because at the, uh, at the RF station, this would probably have been the big panel um, of, of radios and other equipment, all, all controlled remotely at uh, air traffic control desk. So they wouldn't have used the, the front panel of the radio, they would have used a remote control. But we're using it with local control, obviously. So let's go back to keypad local. Set frequency. And there's good old Cranwell. Now this radio probably would have cost several thousand pounds, I would have thought, when it was new. Military equipment is notoriously expensive and very heavy. So this is uh, 18.3 kilos. What's the... So the sign around the back gives the maker information and the serial number. This would, uh, you can see the telephone symbol, so this was all also connected, could be connected to the telephone line. Again, I'm, I imagine for remote operation, but perhaps for telecoms as well. Got the MOD record stamp on it as well. That's interesting, this, um, this counter here ends with a H. So one would have thought that's hours, and this is probably the number of hours this radio has been in service, 55,983. I'm guessing that. I wouldn't be surprised. And we've got a bandwidth switch here, which is good news because modern aircraft radio uses an 8.33 kilohertz channel spacing. Um, and a lot of old radios don't have that because they use 25. But here it's switchable. These switches are quite interesting. You have to pull them to switch them. So, you, so there's no accidental knocking of them. You can't, you can't switch them accidentally. But I am rather chuffed that this appears to be... I haven't, obviously haven't tested the transmit side. I might do just on a dummy load just to see if it's working. But of course we can't transmit legitimately from here because we don't have a license. And I guess the RAF might be a little bit miffed if we transmit on their frequencies. But as a receiver, this is going to be just about the best spec airband radio you could hope to have although there's no scanning and it is a case of pro because we haven't got the ability to program the channels it is a case of manually entering in each I wonder what these are a b c and d i'm i'm going to be very careful about testing some of these controls because as i say i really don't want to be locked out if there is a lockout um that would be a bit sad wouldn't it but um yeah i mean this sort of equipment is just wonderful to have yeah because um, it's such super spec and obviously you know costing an amount of money when it was new that uh, amateurs like me wouldn't possibly have been able to afford I doubt very much you could buy this new as a civilian anyway so I think that eBay gamble rather paid off I'll, I'll post an update when I know a little bit more about this radio but uh, good news